From San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering Cisco Live US 2019. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Good morning, welcome to theCUBE's second day of coverage of Cisco Live 2019 from San Diego. <laughs> I'm Lisa Martin, my co-host is Stu Miniman, and Stu and I have a couple of guests from Cisco's data center networking group with us. To my right, Thomas Scheiba, VP of Product Management, and to his right, Ranga Rao, Senior Director of Product Management. Guys, welcome to theCUBE, welcome oh, back, Ranga. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thomas, great Happy to have to be you. Here, yeah. So here we are in the DevNet zone. This is, uh, Ranga, you were saying this is, this is the, Probably one of the busiest <laughs> locations within all of Cisco Live. It's been jammed since this morning. Yeah, it's the ACI takeover going on right now. It is. Yes. yes. So with that said, Thomas, with ACI, application-centric infrastructure, yeah. all these changes to the network, what's going on on day two? It's it's fun. It's actually, yeah, as you say, that's a lot of bus here. Uh, we have a good set of news coming this week, and yeah, you're going to hear more, but let me give a little bit of a hint here, so what we're doing, we talked about how do we extend ACI into the cloud with ACI Anywhere. We did this two or three months ago with uh, AWS. We're following up with the same for Azure, as well as having extension into the IBM cloud, so that's really, really exciting. Uh, opens up a lot of capabilities, not just for the networking teams, how to extend into the cloud. We also have some interesting things around how do we actually can start with ACI in the cloud first, for the app developers, and then come back if you want to deploy either in the cloud or on-prem. So really an extension of what is doable for the networking team, as well as actually for the app teams. So any, any ACI, any platform, any location, any workload? Any hypervisor, any container platform you want. Yeah, flexibility, that's what this is about. So, Ranga, uh, I spoke with you earlier this year with one of your, one of your partner shows talking about all the latest you know, AI, cognitive learning, and all of those pieces there. Partner's obviously a big piece of the ACI story here. Yep. Thomas was giving a little talk about some of the cloud provider. What more can you share about uh, what, what, what's happening with how your product integrates with a vast ecosystem? Absolutely. Um, when we built ACI, we sort of anticipated this momentum and this crowd in the DevNet area that we are seeing, right? Like from people shifting from a very CLI focused approach to a developer focused and a uh, integration solution focused approach. So we built ACI as an open platform. We have 65 plus partners and with new integrations coming on like every so often. Just this uh, at Cisco Live, we are launching an integration with F5. F5 is building, has built an app for the Cisco ACI App Center and a whole number of tools and integrations for developers. We have essentially built integrations with Ansible, Terraform, and uh, new Python modules. So these are all exciting new things coming at Cisco Live. So when you guys talk with customers, being in product management, I know yeah. you talk to customers all the time, there's presumably a very bi-directional symbiotic relationship. When you're talking with customers, Thomas, what are some of the values that they're looking for ACI to help them deliver, especially as it relates to being able to get more value out of the data that they've got. Right, so there are a couple of things that are probably standing out. One is the, if you're talking to the networking team, it's all around network automation and segmentation. These are the two big things everybody's after. Particularly if you look as the data is more distributed, it's become harder and harder to do this all manually. You want to automate your day one activity, as well as you want to make sure you can enforce segmentation if the data lives in the cloud and on-prem, all over the place. So these are the two big ones that, that really every network operations team is after. And then the second piece that we see obviously more and more is, what about day two? Give me better visibility, particularly as I said, if the data is so distributed, give me better visibility, what is going on, and then be able to tie this back to the user, which is the application team. Is there an impact on the application or not? And so there are a lot of interesting tools that we have, and we're going to demo this all here, that is available for the, for the networking team. The other piece really when you ask for the value is, as I said, the app team, right? What is today, if an app team is developing, they're typically then handed over in production, this is where this friction happens. How long does it take to go from here to here? If I can shorten that one and just take the blueprints out of the app development process and map it directly to the automation capability of ACI, I can shorten the cycle to deploy. And so that's a tremendous value that we do see from customers. 
Great, uh, lots of discussion in the keynote about the ever-changing architectures uh, that, that, that are happening here. Um, give us the update, you know, we, we've, we've been down this path for ACI for a few years now. What, where are your customers at? You know, what, what are the new things that, uh, that, 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 that are causing them challenges and opportunities, Thomas? Yeah, I probably would use instead of ever-changing, I would say ever-expanding, yeah. but you're absolutely right. Because what, what we saw when we started this off is roll around, how do I automate my data center? How do I get a cloud experience in my data center? What we see changing, and quite frankly it's driven by this whole app refactoring process, that customers want to deploy apps maybe in the cloud, maybe develop in the cloud, and so they need an extension to their automated data center into the cloud. And so really what you see from us is an expansion of that ACI concept to Rangas Point. We actually really didn't change, we're just, we're just extending it to container development platforms, to different cloud environments, but it's the same idea. How do I automate the end-to-end network uh, uh, reach as well as the segmentation. Yeah, so. R R Ranga, maybe can you expand on some of that automated piece of it? Uh, yeah. Even, you know, I look at one of, the, one of the things that jumped out at me this week is there's some changes to the CCIE pro program. It's not just, okay, I've done it and I do my test. It's, well, we understand that things are changing year to year and therefore how I get my certification, how I keep up on these is going to change. Where does automation play? In all, Absolutely, in all I mean, when you think about automation, there are two key parts to it. One is the automation that happens within the fabric that the controller manages. And yep. there's a lot of that uh, uh, to extend on like what Thomas was saying, right? In terms of how quickly the fabric can be bring, bring, brought up, how quickly applications can be deployed on the fabric and so on. Beyond that, there's automation that we have built leveraging the modern DevOps and CICD tools that are very popular among the developer community. Uh, like I said, we have built integrations with Ansible, Puppet, Terraform and so on, but we have also made rich APIs available across our platform from every piece of information that the controller or the switches has have is very much accessible for developers. That's like really a uh, path-breaking uh, approach to networking, where developers have access to everything and can program to the network. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, that's the that's where the world is going, and that's what we plan to support with yeah. automation. Let me let me comment on this because there's an interesting piece what we did. Right, we have this fabric controller called the APIC. It's actually an app hosting platform as well. And so what we're actually taking advantage of that, everything is code in ACI, and you can write as a partner customer apps right on top. And so like the F5 integration that we have done is literally an F5 written app residing there, right? And so it's really, really, really flexible to build workflows around what you want to do in the, in the infrastructure for customers themselves, for any partner themselves. Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting piece because when you th you know I, I think back in my career of how much did the network really the, the network architect think about the application? It's like oh okay, how much throughput? And sure, I needed yeah. to go from <laughs> north south to east west, or oh wait, this thing needed some extra buffer credits. But usually, you know, the business owner, application yeah. owner, and the network people were they were throwing things over the right. wall between each other and tweaking some dials here. Now when I look around this show, it's we're talking about building applications at the core of it, and yeah. it's it's, it's, it's happening together. Can you speak a little bit to some of the, some of the activities going around and, and that trend? No, absolutely. It's 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 actually exciting. I actually because of my background as a, as a, I did programming long long time back, and it's it's back, actually back when you called it programming, not coding. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you called it programming. It is actually exciting to see, and I can tell you over the last four or five years, uh, when we run these tutorials, we ask is like architecture and programming. How many people are interested in programming? And it used to be, I don't know, 10%. Now it's literally 60 to 7% of the people in the room are saying, we're using uh, automation frameworks like Ansible. And they actually see what we're doing and the value and they want to learn more. So there's a significant shift in terms of what people expect, what they want to do with their network infrastructure versus what it was in the past. And it's just a reflection on, as I said, the, the agility that is needed out of the infrastructure and how to react to what the, what the developers, the users want to do that put the apps on. So. In the spirit of Cisco's bridge to possible, which was yeah. the Barcelona theme, is this a bridge to IT and business working better together? Absolutely. I mean, the way, I, I, I don't know whether I can say much better. It's absolutely, how do I bridge, we call it initially, how do I bridge between, as you call out, the, the networking and application team? It's the bridge to possible. It's not like, oh, it's your problem, it's my problem. We can do it together, or these two teams can do it together. Absolutely. That's I actually mean, a very good reference. To add to that, like, when we were in 2012 thinking about what should ACI be, everyone in the industry was somehow thinking that all the network engineers will magically become programmers, <laughs> right? So programmability is a big part of like what 
the network needs, but also being aware of the application and being able to respond to the right needs of the application at the right moment is a pretty big thing. And that's what we have built with ACI with the first class support for programmability. And the programmability that we're seeing and hearing about, Ranga, how is that a differentiator for Cisco? So I think first of all, like the network we have always believed is the nervous system of uh, the enterprise. So a lot of really interesting information goes through the uh, network. So unlocking the value of the network for these different use cases is what's made possible with the programmability approaches that we have taken, right? The only reason why we have 65 plus partners programming to our platform is because we have these open APIs. We have a ton of channel partners using the open APIs to build apps and to like support various different use cases for our customers with ad hoc automation or even using some of the automation frameworks. So it has really evolved the network from being CLI centric to being solution and programmability centric. Yeah. You know? yeah. Maybe one point to make, since you said open APIs, and I can't overemphasize this, we're truly open APIs, right? Because sometimes there's in this, not naming names, but people saying, oh, you have to be a certification to use these APIs. That is not the case for Cisco APIs on ACI. They are open, everybody, customers, partners, quite frankly, even competitors could use those to program. We're standing behind our APIs, they can be used as is. Yeah, so, so it, it, it is quite a big, big change. I mean, people know historically Cisco, it's like, well, Cisco solves customer problems, yeah. and then they would drive it through the standards. Here, you know, we, we watch the ascendancy of the DevNet group yeah. and you, you know, hundreds of thousands of people yeah. now helping to build code. It's the API economy. Uh, so, you know, very much it's, 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 it's not the Cisco I thought about a generation ago. <laughs> Thank um, you. you know. <laughs> we, we take this as a compliment. We're actually really excited to see how much development is possible by opening this platform up with APIs. And I think there's somebody else that is, so it's not online, but the more APIs to have, you have, the easier it is to integrate, the faster we jointly develop and actually achieve what we want. So that's the bridge. And the beautiful thing about APIs is customers and other developers build things that we even haven't envisioned. You know, we are seeing a lot of that. So that's where in that's another way of unlocking innovation for our customers, and we are seeing a lot of that, you know? Yeah. So when we talk with any customer, any business, we always talk about speed scales, speed to innovation. With the wave of connectivity, yeah. the expansion of 5G, yeah. Wi-Fi 6, um, the proliferation of mobile data that's going to be traversing yeah. the networks in the next few years, it's going to be video. How is an application-centric infrastructure going to allow customers to take advantage of the, the demands on the network but the, that need for speed so that your customers yeah. can be as competitive as they need to yeah. be. Try, 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 let, me, let me try to kind of tune down to the essence there. What really is going on, you have all these different applications as you point out, all of different users and endpoints. And what you want to do is you want to have an ability to correlate between what the user wants to run on the infrastructure and how the infrastructure has to behave. And then also, you want to be correlate back if the infrastructure issues, who is impacted. And really what ACI was about is not rebuilding application, it was about to provide this glue, this bridge, between what's going on in the infrastructure to what the user experiences. And if I can do this, it becomes so much more efficient and it's so much easier to roll out all these new applications on an ACI infrastructure. Exciting stuff, guys. Thomas Ranga, thank you for yeah. joining Stu and me on theCUBE today. Lots of exciting stuff. We'll be listening for those announcements that you said are coming out later yep. today. Okay, All we'll right. see you. <laughs> Excellent, thanks guys, we appreciate okay, your well. time. Thanks, same here, Thank appreciate you. it. Our Thank pleasure. You. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from our second day of coverage of Cisco Live from San Diego. Thanks for watching. Yep.